Amen. Amen. It is once more and again that we have indeed been blessed by the Almighty God of heaven. We are grateful unto God for granting unto us yet another opportunity whereby we can come together and study His holy and His divine word. Yes. Yeah. It certainly is good to look out and see those of you who have come to be with us this night in this gospel meeting, the first night of the gospel meeting. We had a day and an evening. And this is the first night of the gospel meeting, and we are grateful unto God for sparing our lives and blessing us to come together in an assembly such as this, that the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth might be imparted from this pulpit here tonight. Amen. Those of you who are visiting with us and you're not members of the body of Jesus Christ, I want to let you know how elated we are that you have come to be with us. Amen. We are glad to have you here, and we're glad that you have come to study the Bible with us in such a way that we will be able to investigate God's Word together. And it is our prayer, it is our hope that you will open not only your Bibles, but your minds yeah. and understand what will be taught from God's Word to such a degree that when you examine your life, you examine your walk with God and discover that it's not according to the Bible, yeah. we want you to change tonight because yeah. tonight might be the only night that yeah. God has given you to change your ways. Amen. So we're going to extend an invitation here in just a little while, and that invitation is going to be an invite for you to come and be a part of the church that you can read about in the Bible and to be a part of the family of God. Amen. Look with me at 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 28 and 29. Please stand with me for the reading of the word of Almighty God. 1 Kings chapter 12. Standing at verse number 28, very familiar passage because we looked at this particular passage upon last evening. We just want to reiterate some things that we discovered from this particular text. 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 28 and 29, whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. God bless you. You may be seated. We're asking that the Lord would indeed add a blessing unto those who are the readers, yeah. and truly unto those who are the doers yes, of his holy and his divine. Will. We're talking about the sins of a man named Jeroboam. Yeah. And tonight we're going to look at the fact that Jeroboam changed the place of worship. Yes. We're going to look at how men today are changing the place of worship. On last evening, we began studying the actions of one named Jeroboam. Mm -hmm. Jeroboam became king over the northern tribes of Israel when the people of Israel decided not to be under the kingly reign of the house of David any longer. Mm -hmm. God had informed Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 9 through 13, that because of his sin of idolatry, that he was going to rend or to tear the kingdom away from him. Mm -hmm. He was not going to do it in his lifetime, yeah. in the lifetime of his son who would reign after him. Yes, well, after Solomon died, his son Rehoboam came into office, and the people of Israel had a meeting with him to discuss how he was going to treat them. The Bible describes this meeting unto us in 1 Kings chapter 12, and beginning at verse number 1, it says, And Rehoboam went to Shechem. All Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it. 
He was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. They sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father, and his heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve thee. Yeah. And he said unto them, Depart yet for three days. Then come again to me, and the people departed. After three days, the Bible indicated that Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he had lived and said, How do you advise? I may answer this people. And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. But the Bible painfully informs us that he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and that stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that I may answer the pe this people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, That thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, my little finger shall be thicker than thy father's loins. Mm -hmm. And now, whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father hath chastised you with whips, yeah. but I will chastise you with scorpions. Mm -hmm. And so Jeroboam and all the people took, came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly, the Bible says, and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him. Well, once Rehoboam gave these people an unfavorable response, the Bible says in verse number 16, when all of Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. But as for the children which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, which was over the tribute. All of Israel stoned him with stones that he died. Therefore King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. Well, my brothers and my sisters, the Bible also informs us in verse number 20 here that it came to pass and all of Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again. They sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all of Israel. The Bible indicates unto us how, Je Re how Jeroboam became king. And after the fact that Israel had rejected Rehoboam, they <coughs> made Jeroboam king over them. Yes. After some time, my brothers and my sisters, Jeroboam became paranoid and started thinking that there is a chance that he might lose control of the kingdom. Yeah. That's what we went over yesterday when Jeroboam in verse number 26 said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again to their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. And in verses 28 and 29, the Bible indicates that Jeroboam took some bad advice. He took counsel, and after the counsel that he took, after the message that had been given to him from his advisors, he made two calves of gold and then told the people that it was too much 
for them to have to go all the way up to Jerusalem.